lessons. I mean, every, isn't it true that everything that we go through is really a lesson? All these stories and stories and stories all have lessons. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm sick of hearing that there's a lesson in it. And it's the truth that everything, there isn't anybody here that's got a story going on that doesn't have a lesson attached to it. And the lesson and the answer to all of it is love. There isn't anything that you are going through at this moment that the answer isn't love. Loving yourself through it, loving yourself more. You know, the truth is that we create the stories of our life so that we can learn the lessons, so that we can love even deeper, so that we can find that incredible peace of love inside of us and share it out with the world and share it out, you know, to change not only the, the vibration of what's in you, but to change the vibra vibration of the whole world. And the more expanded our consciousness is, the more love that we can express. And the more rigid and tight our consciousness is, the less love that we have to express. And that's this whole spiritual journey that's, that we're on. That's what we say in different ways every Sunday is, you know, come to terms, find that peace within you and share it with each other. You know, the answer to all the stories. I mean, we all have stories. I'm looking at all of you that I know here and I know many of your stories and they're sad and they're funny, they're crazy. I think we got a couple crazy stories. You know, and in one life, there's all of that too. Crazy stories, funny stories, sad stories, tragedies. You know, because we are, that's who we are, is a, a conglomeration of stories. That's not who we are, but that's what appears. And our job then is to step beyond it and find out the truth of who we are. You know, these stories are co-created by each of us. So we've created, all of us here, all of us at Common Ground, have created a story together. And we've given it the meaning in our life. We've given it meaning just so we might see the highest, so we can see the best in each other, so that we can ultimately see the truth of who we are, see that we are this incredible big heart. We aren't the rigid consciousness that judges, even though sometimes that appears, doesn't it? We can step back and love even more. So our life is about stories, 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 stories. I thought about the millions of stories in our life this week I did go on, um, it was actually a memorial. Remember my sister died in October. And we finally had our memorial for her in Park City, Utah, up in the mountains of Utah. Oh my gosh, wow, it is so beautiful. We rented a big house, great big house, with all my family. <laughs> Mom Doss says, if you want to, if you think you're enlightened, go visit your family. <laughs> I knew I wasn't enlightened after I had, had been there. But there was, it was this big house full of, um, you know, 20, 20 of us or so, and they all had different floors, and it was huge. It was just a great, wonderful time. But um, the truth is there was so much story that at this one particular point during the memorial, everybody kind of split up, and they were all in little conversations. Have you ever been in a room where there's little conversations going on, and you're not in any of them, but you're listening? <laughs> you're like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, it happens here all the time. Everybody's in a conversation, you're kind of walking around, you know, and stuff, and listening to the conversations and deciding which one that you want to get into. So um, I actually didn't want to get into any of them. And, um, you know, I stepped step back, and I heard the conversation kind of going on. This is interesting, between um, Eden, my six-year-old grandson, and his cousin, right? His cousin he hasn't seen forever since the kid was a baby. Well, the cousin is now nine years old, this big kid, big kid, nine years old. And Eden's this little kind of scrawny six-year-old, right? So he had to go mingle too. So he's fi finally having to get along with his cousin. And I hear him kind of talking. And I had to kind of write this down because re I'm remembering it kind of as it was, not exactly. But I hear Eden and he's sitting and he's going, I'm a really good soccer player. <laughs> and the kid goes, this is Cam, and Cam says, well, I'm the best football player on my team. Oh. And he, he just sat there and goes, I kicked three goals last game. <laughs> and Cam goes, I scored five touchdowns last game. <laughs> Eden says, 
<laughs> well, I can run, I ran faster than Eddie on my team. Eddie's really fast. And Cam says, well, I run faster than the whole team. And I'm also bigger than everyone on the team. Because when Eden then looks at his little body, and he looks down and he says, I think I gotta go now. <laughs> And he's kind of a straight, lay, serious little guy, you know, he's, he's, it's just, just him. And I got to thinking about how each of us start, you know, younger than that, really, by creating these stories. I mean, that was his little story. So in his mind, what kind of story around that being little will he create, right? You know, will he, you know, go back and say, I'm, I'm this little scrawny guy. I mean, maybe he'll grow up to be a big, huge guy. I don't know. Or maybe not. And the story that he'll create around it will shape his life unless he can step back eventually and realize that he's not the story, you know. And I got that thinking about everybody. There were all these stories going on. And it put me, if you've ever been to a family reunion and um, have tried to do spiritual practice, you realize that you go back, right back to where you were when you were a kid. Right back to where you were when you were a kid. I was a middle child, you know, and I was always trying to please everybody. I felt like I was the same kid. It brought back all the memories. Even though I took this on as a spiritual practice, I knew when I went, you know, lots of prayer, lots of meditation, that I could, you know, I'll do this. I'll be able to step in here and see everything and see everybody in love. These are all lessons. I see everybody in love. Every moment I see, you know, the essence of the situation, you know. And then the minute I got into it, I became that little kid again where my heart's pounding and I gotta make sure of this and I gotta make sure of that, right? And so, it's a practice. It's a practice of moment by moment being able to see, you know, the stories of your life and know that they're the stories and embrace who you are through them. See, that, that's the deal is that, you know, not kick the kid that you were and say, oh, why was I this way? And why did I do this? And why did I create the shadow? Because that's what we do. We create the shadows of our life and we try to ignore what went on in our life, you know, and say, you know, if I have an angry side and I try to suppress it, you know, that I create this shadow that pops up. So our job is to take our stories and to embrace them and say, yeah, I was that kid. You know, this happened to me. This happened to me. And maybe it wasn't the best thing that ever could have happened. This was my story. But that's not who I am. I'm so much more. And I can step beyond it and see the essence and the love, the love that there is in it. You know, I, I am that young girl still. Maybe not on the outside, but inside, those feelings are still there. And then as I embrace that girl, you know, and I see that she's just doing the best she can, right? We're all doing the best we can for what we know. And now our job as we is as spiritual beings, and we know it, is to step back and to bring love to the situation, to see it, you know, to see it differently than we did. And not to get stuck like that baby in the box. Didn't to get stuck in that story and then project it on everybody that we see. You know, if you have, Judy and I were talking, a lot of people have mother issues. A lot of mother issues. And if you don't heal it, if you don't heal these mother issues, it comes out in the people around you. So a lot of people have mother issues with Judy because she's a nurturing kind of person. She's a loving person. And so a lot of people get mad at Judy more than they do me. They don't see me that way. Isn't that interesting? It's a truth, though. It is the truth, isn't it, Judy? And we see that. If we don't heal, it comes out in others. So if you've got an issue usually with somebody, it's usually something right here in you. And that's our spiritual practice, is not to be able to, to get stuck in that, but to work through that, to find the love in it, and find the shadow, and not get stuck in it. Ain't it awful? Ain't it awful that this happened? And that was kind of my family stories. You know, ain't this awful? We went through this. Oh, this was awful. This was awful. You know? But to step back and say, you know, that wasn't so awful. And if it was, it's okay, I can make it through. I can make it through and I can, can be this awesome human being to serve others and help others, you know? It's about observing the stories of our life, not trying to, to reframe them, not trying to judge them, you know, but being able to just step back and see them and bring love to it all. And it is a day-by-day -day practice. And see, love, when I say love, and I'm gonna close because I want Judy to be able to talk. It's funny, I was gonna read the same thing she did. That's how important that reading was, that I had it, and I was gonna read it, and then when she got here and I see she had it, because we don't, 
talk about what we're going to talk about. We just go for it. And and she had the reading. I went, huh, you know, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> and then I thought, oh, well, I can, you know, I can talk about a lot. I usually have a lot to say. But if that's how important that is, you know, about reframing, the, about deframing the, the story that she read and seeing it with the eyes of love. And love to me is feeling the essence, the essence of the other person or the situation that you're in. So if you're in a situation that doesn't feel very loving, you know, find the essence in it. Find what's good about the situation that you're in. There's something good about it. Of course it's a lesson, and lessons suck sometimes. But it's the truth. There is a lesson in everything. But find the highest and the deepest and the most conscious part of the challenge that you're going through, of the situation or of the person. There were a lot of challenges. You know, 25 members of a family. My gosh, you know, and they all come with their stories and their projections. And it's a very, very conscious person that can see love all the time. I don't think most people can do it, but you can break away a little bit, chip a little bit, and bring love to the situation, to the pain. So as painful as it was to read about what the events in Colorado, and it was painful, I felt my, myself you know, in pain until I read the email that Larry sent, and I said, wow, you know what? That's what we do. That is the framing the whole story. That's taking it apart and seeing the love in it. There was so much more love than there was hate in that story. And that's how we have to focus our lives. So take that incident, whatever you feel in your life, and feel the love that's there included in your story. And so that's my prayer, is that we each can see now with the eyes of love at the story of our whole life.